Okay, good morning all. Uh, my name is Patrick O'Connor and I'm working with Chagas. And my brief today is to go through actually what happens in the pit. Uh, so it's, you know, from the time the cows come into the collecting yard until they go back out again. So that's really what I'm going to cover with you this morning. Um, I suppose the first thing that I'd like to go through is um, preparing the milking machine. And by that I mean, you know, having the milking machine ready for milking before you go to collect the cows, or before the cows come into the collecting yard. I think what happens is that if the cows are waiting in the collecting yard, they get a bit stressed, and stress, you'll have higher uh, incidence of mastitis, so you want to reduce that. So make sure you have the milking machine ready. If you need to rinse it out, have it rinsed out, have the pipe into the bowl tank, have the milk filter sock in, and so on and so forth. All that kind of stuff ready. That's the first point. The second point I'd like to go through is maybe just preparing yourself for milking. And that is having either a power suit, our milking apron or something like that on. And it's important that when you go through milking that that's kept clean at all times. Okay? I suppose what a, you know, the milker is a conduit between the, the cows and the milking machine. You know, so if your apron is dirty, you're spreading infection during the milking. So you want to avoid that or reduce that. Okay? So keep your apron or your milking powder suit clean as you go through the milking itself as well. The second thing, and, and you'll see this morning that I'm actually wearing nitrile disposable gloves. Um, why are we wearing these? Well, if you look at a glove, it's lovely and smooth. So when dirt gets on it, it's easier to wash it off compared to your hands. Okay, these are not self-disinfecting, so it's very, very important to keep them clean and disinfected, you know, as you go through the milking. Particularly, for example, if you draw a cow and she has clinical mastitis. Okay, before you move on to the next cow, make sure that you wash and you disinfect that hand, that gloved hand, before you move on to the next cow. Um, I suppose the next thing that I'd like to maybe just go through with you is maybe cow preparation. Um, and I suppose that varies quite a bit on farms. Um, you know, so you know, we just go through that and, and maybe what's the what's best practice. So I suppose best practice really is that clusters have to go on to clean, dry teats. They should be drawn as well. However, however, what's happening out there on farms, particularly bigger farms, farmers, you, you know, they don't have time to draw the cows. But as a compromise, what farmers are doing now is maybe in the springtime of the year, they're actually throwing the kitchen sink at it. By that I mean they're making sure to draw the cows, picking up any cows that have mastitis, and so on and so forth. And when you get maybe to, you know, the summertime, you know, when conditions are cleaner, um, you know, cows are coming in and they're putting the cluster straight on, uh, um, you know, so at least there's a bit of a compromise there. In the springtime, it's more challenging, there's a bigger uh, numbers of bacteria about, so therefore I think it's important that farmers, you know, uh, uh, draw cows at that, at that time of year. Okay, so that's really maybe getting the parlour ready, getting yourself ready, and maybe cow preparation. So now maybe we'll go down onto the pit and maybe go through maybe, you know, putting on clusters, taking off clusters and maybe efficiency within the, in, in the pit itself. Okay, so, you know, we have a row of cows in the parlour here and we're ready actually to, to start milking. So we've prepped the cows or whatever like that. Okay, so the first maybe key point I'd like to get across is, um, you know, that you start at the front of the parlour and you work your way back. All right, that's the first point. And I suppose that we split the parlour up in the batches as well. So we'll maybe take four cows at a time, prep four cows, put the clusters on those four cows, spray the four cows you have to take the clusters off of. Okay? Why are we doing that? Why are we suggesting that? You're actually doing a lot of work in this area of the parlour here. You're minimising the amount of walking that you're doing. Okay? So that's the first point. Uh, the other thing is that you're actually getting the teeth spray onto the cows, you know, fairly close to taking the clusters off the cows as well. Okay? And that's the most effective way in relation to teeth spray. The second point I'd like to get across is in relation to, you know, where you're standing in relation to this long milk tube here. Okay? So I'm going to demonstrate it here now. So if you're taking the clusters off from this side to this side, you're holding the cluster, and you're standing in front of this tube here. So it's when I swap across, it's upper side of me. So when I'm going to cluster number two, again, this tube is not in my way. I'm standing upper side of the tube, so when I twist around and put on the cluster on this side here, the tube is upper side of me. Okay, and the same with, you know, down the line. And it's amazing, you know, when you see some milkers milking, you know, they're fighting with, with this tube as they're going back along the power. So maybe just to, 
uh, maybe transfer them across the other way again. Make sure that you're standing upper side of the tube. Switch the cl cluster across. Then this tube is upper side of me. So it's when I'm going to cluster number two, it's not in my way. Okay? And same with cluster number three. And again, you know, it makes it that much easier that you're not attacking that tube when you're going back along the parallel. Okay? So that's the first point I'd like to make. I suppose the second key point that I'd like to get across here this morning is, um, you know, trying to change hands when you're putting it on, when you're putting the cluster on, depending on what side that you're actually putting the cluster on at. Okay? And I suppose why, why are we, why are we uh, 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 big on this at the moment? It's to reduce repetitive strain injury. Okay? And it is beginning to be a bit of a problem out there on farms. Particularly as herds are getting bigger and milking powers are getting bigger as well. Okay, so I suppose the first thing is you'll, you'll hear me talking about you know holding the cluster on the right hand or the left hand or the right hand side of the parlour and the left hand side of the parlour. So I suppose just maybe to put that to bed first of all, which is the right hand side of the parlour and which is the left hand side of the parlour? It really depends on what way you're looking, but the way that we, we, we ascertain that is you face the same direction as the cows are facing with your back to the collecting yard. Okay, so that's the right hand side of the parlour here in this particular case, and that's the left hand side of the parlour in this particular case here. Okay, so let's say um, I'm trying to, I'm transferring the clusters from one side to the other. Okay, so I catch it in this hand here, and when I swap it across, this is the right hand side of the parlour, I'm holding the cluster with my left hand. Okay, when I'm putting on the clusters, I make sure to have this teeth cup up first before I go in between the back legs. So one, two, three, and four. Okay, so I'm going around in a circular motion. I'm standing opposite, or the tube is opposite of me, so it's not in my way when I'm going back to cluster number two. I'm catching the cluster with this hand, which is my left hand, transfer it across, you know, this is the right hand side of the parlour, it's also the hand that's closest to the front of the pit. So again, one, two, three, and four. And the same with close to number three. Okay. One, two, three, and four. Okay, so that's putting it onto the right hand side of the parallel. Now maybe I'll just demonstrate to you when I'm transferring it to the other side. Again, make sure I'm opposite of the tube. When I'm transferring it across, I want the cluster in my right hand. I take it off with my right hand. When I transfer it across, it's the hand that's closest to the front of the parlour. So this is the left hand side of the parlour. I'm holding the cluster with my right hand. And I'm copying anti-clockwise this time. One, two, three, and four. Same with number two. I'm catching it with this hand. I transfer it across. It's the hand that's close to the front of the parlour. One, two, three, and four. And just the same with number three. One, two, three, and four. Okay, so we're using both hands. Okay, I suppose the other thing that I'd like to show you is when you're putting on the cluster, it's important that you minimize the amount of air that's going up through these teacups when you're putting it on. And I suppose maybe one way uh, to, to do that is when you're putting on the cluster, make sure that you kink the bottom of the teeth liner so it's minimizing the amount of air that's going into this when you're putting it on as well. Okay? Um, so that's in relation to you know, cluster changing. Uh, we're trying to reduce repetitive strain injury. Um, you know, and I suppose look at how long does it take to change a habit? You know, you're talking about at least a month. Okay, so you have to give it time. I suppose the other thing is, you know, what time of year would you start off, you know, maybe implementing this kind of a technique? It's really this time of year in the summertime, uh, you know, when the heifers are settled in, uh, when the cows are fairly clean and all that kind of stuff, okay? So it's, you know, when, when things are running fairly smoothly in the parlor, that's when you'd actually try to implement something like this, okay?